Okie doke. Now that I have the uh, part, of, good portion of the ejector system actually uh, assembled, haven't tested yet. Um, just did most of this work here in the last uh, two days. Um, the uh, ejector assembly, the uh, main ejector I discussed earlier in a previous video called ejector refrigeration. Um, I am going to be firing this thing up probably tomorrow. Um, I only have two connections yet to make. Uh, the suction back to the compressor and the high pressure liquid coming into the main throttling valve. So now that uh, it's mostly assembled, I thought I'd make another video here just explaining what I hope to happen. So uh, we have what's very obviously a fin coil, air heat exchanger. That was an air conditioner right there. There's a bunch of other pieces over there. Um, this is going to be somewhere between a dry evaporator and a flooded evaporator. Not exactly sure how it's going to operate. But um, some main components here are a brass needle valve, an ejector assembly, a gas liquid separator, sight glass, a liquid comes off, goes through a gate valve which can be closed down to act as a sort of a throttle. Liquid refrigerant is fed to the coils. Gas and possibly liquid combination come up through. Sight glass, temperature sensor, pressure sensor, and then back into the ejector. In operation, the intention is the uh, high pressure motive fluid, a high pressure uh, liquid refrigerant comes shooting through the, uh, the first needling valve and uh, actually comes down through a tube. This quarter inch tube and the three eighths tube extend down through the center of the ejector and there's a small orifice with a capillary tube tip that uh, uh, ejects that uh, motive fluid down through this quarter inch tubing and then it diverges down here and this divergent nozzle where it opens back up to half inch. Uh, this here is half inch as well up here. Um, this is uh, creates high velocity and low pressure, creates a, a slight vacuum, um, pressure that is lower than the coil, drawing uh, saturated vapor, uh, possibly some liquid, uh, through the uh, inside of the half inch pipe and on the outside of the 3 8 inch pipe, and uh, the two mix in the throat, and uh, the combination uh, saturated uh, liquid vapor uh, increases in pressure in this divergent nozzle as the cross-sectional area increases. It uh, slows down, the velocity is converted back into pressure, and um, the combination settles in the separator tank. Uh, the liquid level is going to be maintained somewhere around the middle here, um, where vapor is drawn off back to the compressor, and liquid goes on to do for full, uh, further cooling work. Um, the sight glass is a piece of half-inch outside diameter nylon rated at 250 pounds per square inch working pressure. The, uh, this is a thermocouple installed directly in the refrigerant line. There's some videos on making those. Uh, this one's actually um, sits right out, it will sit right out in the, uh, the liquid in the separator there to get a, a temperature on the uh, separator column. Uh, pressure reading for that is actually going to be just taken from the, uh, the gauges at the suction on the compressor, rotary type compressor. Um, and then in addition I can take a temperature reading uh, from the suction gas of the evaporator and also a pressure reading. And uh, my intention is that uh, the pressure and temperature in the separator column should be higher than the temperature and pressure in the evaporator. Um, the fact that this will be at some sort of a medium pressure hopefully, um, will provide some of the force, some of the, the uh, potential to allow uh, liquid to be fed through this valve and uh, quickly course through the evaporator coil. The condenser for this, um, although previously in, uh, in the last setup I used, uh, let's see that one on the very back, uh, it's just a um, uh, condenser out of an uh, air conditioning unit, a different one than this one, but uh, it was mounted up here. I've returned back to the water-cooled condenser, which is about 25 loops of uh, quarter-inch tubing inside of that ABS tank um, with a barb fitting at the bottom and a barb fitting at the top to circulate water through via a pump. Um, previously, this, uh, this system seemed to work rather well, but I never did develop a method to, uh, to uh, dissipate the heat 
of the water. So I essentially just built a batch water heater that would elevate temperature quickly and you know caused me all kinds of grief in the in the system considering that uh, the head pressure kept rising and rising. So what I will be doing uh, rather shortly once I finish putting the lines on to connect uh, the uh, the condenser compressor and entire evaporator unit uh, will be to uh, uh, put a tank or a bucket of some sort out here and make sort of a water fountain type type arrangement to hopefully get some evaporative cooling um, and I may also resort to uh, putting a fan cooled uh, uh, water radiator outside as well. I chose not to go with the uh, uh, direct condenser, air cooled condenser uh, for a number of reasons having to do with uh, running copper outside, having a more permanent setup outside, uh, longer runs, more use of copper, and uh, I intend to have a heat pump built for this fall, which is going to uh, use water as the uh, medium to carry heat into the house. So it's about time that I start to uh, to fool around with that a little more. Uh, in addition, I'd like to put in thermocouples <clears throat> on the uh, the inlet and the outlet of the uh, water water uh, heat exchanger uh, so I can measure the temperature difference and uh, with knowing the flow rate <clears throat> give me a better idea <clears throat> of the change in enthalpy of the uh, the uh, refrigerant passing through it. So anyway that is uh, that's about it for the setup at this moment and hopefully this evening I'll have uh, the rest of the lines installed. Thanks for watching.